Alina props a 12-foot ladder against the side of her house so that she can sneak into her upstairs bedroom window. Okay, so let's stop there and draw a picture of what we have. So we've got the side of a house here, we've got the ground here, and um, obviously that would make a right angle, and we've got a ladder propped here. The ladder is going to be a fixed length, it's not going to be changing length, so that's going to be a constant value, 12 feet. Okay, So let's keep reading now. It says, unfortunately, the ground is muddy because of a recent rainstorm, and the base of the ladder slides away from the house. Okay, so we're talking about the base of the ladder here sliding this way. So we need some variables. Let's call uh, the horizontal distance from the base of the house to the base of the ladder x. And with that notation, we can say dx dt is equal to the um, what it says. It says the ground is muddy because of the rainstorm. The base of the ladder slides away from the house at a rate of half a foot per second. So the dx dt, the change in that uh, horizontal distance is half a foot per second. All right, now we can keep reading. How fast is the top of the ladder moving down the side of the house? So we're looking at this rate, uh, when the base of the ladder is 10 feet from the house. So our horizontal, or sorry, our vertical, let's call y, so that we know that we're looking for dy dt. That's our unknown, that's what it's asking us for because it says how fast is the top of the ladder moving down the side of the house, so it's dy dt that we're looking for. We can go ahead and figure out uh, what the units would be, because dx dt is feet per second. Um, we'd be having feet per second here, too. Okay. Um, let's see, do we expect this to be negative or positive? Well, if the top of the ladder is sliding down the house, that vertical distance is getting shorter. And so the getting shorter concept means we should be expecting a negative value here. Okay, so the very end of this gives us our final piece of information. It says uh, when the base of the ladder is 10 feet from the house. So it's saying at the snapshot time, x time when x is equal to 10 feet. Now this x equals 10 feet is not a constant. And that's really important because you, you cannot plug that in before taking the derivative or else you're not going to have any x's and therefore you're not going to have any dx dt's. And we know that uh, x is changing because we have dx dt being um, something other than zero. And so even though they give us the value of x equals 10, we cannot plug that in until after the derivative is taken. So now we have our variables set, we've got all of our information in, and we need a way to relate the variables x and y. So we see a right triangle, and perhaps we could think of various things for right triangles. Maybe we'd initially think, oh, we could do perimeter, or we could do area, um, but really those aren't going to be super helpful for us um, because we're not given any sort of information about perimeter and area. All we're given are the dimensions here of this right triangle. But since it's a right triangle, we also have a very special theorem that's really useful a lot of times, and that would be the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so for the Pythagorean theorem, we have um, we would have x squared plus y squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared, and the hypotenuse is the um, side opposite the right angle, and that would be our fixed value there, 12, and we'd square it. So there's our Pythagorean theorem. And so we can um, take that equation that relates x and y, and we can uh, take the derivative with respect to t of both sides to get a relationship that would involve the rates of change also. So we'd have d dt of the left-hand side is equal to d dt of the right-hand side. We could also go ahead and compute that 12 squared is 144, but it really doesn't matter either way because it's a constant value. And the derivative of that constant, 12 squared, which is 144, is going to be equal to zero here on the right-hand side. So now it's the left-hand side that's a little bit more involved for the derivative. Uh, the left-hand side is a sum of two things, um, x squared and y squared, and each one would be like a power rule problem. Both x and y are changing over time, and so the chain rule part is involved also. So we'll take the, the derivative of the left-hand side term by term. We'll take the derivative of x squared first by bringing down the 2 
dropping the power by one, so it would be two x, and then the chain rule part is bringing out the derivative of that inside function, so dx dt. And then we have these terms separated by a plus sign, and we just repeat this for y. We bring down the power two, we drop the power um, to one, so we have two y, but again, we have the rate of change that has to uh, come out, dy dt. Okay. So now we have the relationship um, that involves our rates of change as well. So I've compiled all the information here that we had from the previous, um, from the previous slide. We know a value for x, we know a value for dx dt, we're looking for dy dt, but if we look at the, um, the derivative expression or the derivative equation from before, this one over here on the right hand side, we have x dx dt, y and dy dt, so we really need a y still. And um, we can go back to the Pythagorean theorem to figure out at the instant x is equal to 10, what is y equal to? Obviously, y and x are both changing, but at that snapshot moment in time, um, when x is equal to 10, we can figure out what y would be. And so when we plug in to that same equation, the Pythagorean theorem, we'd have 10 squared plus y squared is equal to uh, 12 squared. So we know 10 squared is 100. So we'd have 100 plus y squared is equal to the 144. Subtract 100 from both sides to get y squared equals 44. And when we take the square root so that we solve for y, technically when we're doing algebra, taking the square root of both sides requires plus or minus, but the positive one's the only one that's relevant because we're talking about physical positive measurements. And so the negative one can be thrown out. So we're looking at the square root of 44. We can simplify the square root of 44 a bit because um, 44 has a common fact, or 44 has a factor of 4, which is a perfect square. So what we would have then is the square root of 4 times 11, and when we break that up, it would be the square root of 4, which is 2, and then the square root of 11, which can't be further simplified. So now we have values for x, dx, dt, and y, leaving us with the only unknown being dy, dt that we wanted to find. So we can go ahead and plug everything in. So we've got 2, and then x we have as 10. dx, dt we have as 1 half, plus 2, y we have as 2 root 11, and then dy, dt, and that's all equal to 0. So let's see, 2 times 10 is 20, times a half, that would be half of 20, which is back to the 10, because the 2 and the 1 half are really canceling each other. So the next term here, we've got 2 times 2 root 11. So since this is multiplication, we could um, regroup things, and we could do 2 times 2, which is 4, square root of 11, dy dt, equals 0. And we're trying to solve for the dy dt. So let's move the 10 to the other side through subtraction. So that'd be 4 root 11 dy dt equals negative 10. And to get dy, dy, dy dt by itself, we then divide um, both sides by the thing sitting in front of dy dt. So that would be our negative 10 over, now the stuff sitting in front is 4 root 11. Uh, we can simplify this a little bit and rationalize it too. Uh, the 10 and the 4 have a common factor of 2, so the fraction could be reduced a little bit by um, having 5 halves instead of 10 fourths. We still have the square root of 11 on the bottom, but the way we can get rid of the square root of the, the 11 on the bottom is by multiplying by a really fancy form of 1, which is square root of 11 times its, or over itself. So then dy dt is going to be negative 5 root 11 over, it would be 2 times, the root 11 times itself would just be 2 times then 11, so that would be 22. And uh, we talked earlier about how this is going to be uh, feet uh, per second, and notice that it is in fact uh, negative like we expected.